the rich young man, from Matthew nineteen sixteen to twenty six. The Lord says, "When we were about an hour's journey away from the place we had been, a young man from the very same place came to us along the way. He had been a witness of my deeds and teachings the evening before as well, and on top of that, he is a very competent scribe for his young age, but not by profession. When he saw and recognized me." He stopped me and wondered if he were allowed to ask me a question. I allowed it, and he spoke. Good master, what good things shall I do so that I may obtain eternal life, of which your disciples told so many wonderful and certainly true things yesterday at the Greek innkeeper Rauer's place? How may I achieve it more quickly than how your disciples described it? I looked at him sternly and said to him, "Why are you calling me good, me who, as far as you know, am only a man? You are a scribe. Do you not know that apart from God, no one is good? However, if you wish to enter eternal life, then keep the commandments." The man asked further and said, "Which commandments?" But he asked this question because he thought that I had some new and completely unknown commandments. But I said to him, "Those which Moses gave: You shall not commit murder; you shall not commit adultery; you shall not steal; you shall not bear false witness." Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Thereupon the young man asked, "But who should or can I consider my neighbor?" At this, I told him the familiar parable of the compassionate Samaritan, and now he understood who was to be seen as his neighbor. After having listened to me and accepted what I had said, he spoke. If all this is true, then I can fully assure you that I have done all these things ever since I was a child. So what am I missing? And I answered him, If you want to be whole, go and sell all your earthly possessions and give them to the poor. That is how you shall come to possess a treasure in heaven. After that, come and follow me, become my disciple, and learn from me the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. As the young man heard me say this, he was saddened, for he possessed many great goods. He turned his back to me and went on his way. The disciples were surprised by this and said, "How very curious! The man seemed to be quite sure that the spirit of God was speaking from within you, but for the sake of the vain treasures of the world, he preferred to turn his back on the Almighty Spirit of God instead of heeding his admonition. Strange! How very strange indeed! What will happen to people such as him?" I said. It will be quite difficult for a rich man like this to ever enter the kingdom of heaven. Pay attention to what else I will say to all of you. Truly, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard such a thing from me, they were horrified and said, "Oh dear!" If that is the case, then who will ever be able to enter the kingdom of heaven and be saved? I, however, looked at the embarrassed disciples amicably and gave them consolation, saying, 
With men, such a thing would indeed be impossible. But with God, everything is possible.